So my name is Finn and in this video I'm going to show you guys how you can build parallel bars for your own backyard. The initial build is straightforward enough, all you're going to need are a few household tools. I built an outdoor pull up bar last summer and I'd gotten quite a few questions from people asking me how I actually built this. So I thought to myself, why not shoot some footage while my dad and I build these parallel bars and hopefully it helps you guys out or anybody wanting to, to build their own parallel bars. So the materials we went out and bought for this build were galvanized tubing, 6 meters long which we then cut down to 2 3 meter lengths. The diameter of the tubing 1.5 inches. So we also went out and we got 4 wooden fence posts which were 3 by 3s. So the first thing you want to do is prise a hole in the ground, basically dig a hole using a crowbar or a spike, something that will allow you to prise the ground apart. So this is going to make it a lot easier to drive your fence post into the ground. So we ended up using a brick for driving our fence post. Ideally you want to use a fence driver for this, but if you don't have the tools, it still is possible. Just take care guys, and as you can see, the brick actually broke on us, so just wear gloves, because it will cut up your hands otherwise. We drove our fence posts into the ground about 3 foot to get them to the, our desired height. So beforehand we actually did a little test piece, we got a galvanized pole and we put it against one of our offcuts. We then drew around it and pre-drilled that just to see how it would look before committing to the actual build so we wouldn't make any mistakes. So I actually made a mistake of not buying our fence post lens pre-sharpened. So I had to go and I had to sharpen all of these fence posts like a little beaver. and. Uh, it took me a long time, so make sure you guys plan in advance, get them sharpened, and uh, it's going to save you a lot of time, so don't make a mistake like I did. So we spaced the parallel bars exactly two foot apart, that's from the center of each pole, so that makes it a little wider than shoulder width apart for me, and that's perfect. You don't want them too short, and you, you, know, you don't want them too tight together, and you don't want them too wide. We came across a rock right where we were going to drive in one of our fence posts, so make sure you check your ground beforehand guys and it will save you some time. So our fence posts ended up being a little bit too long, so we cut about a foot off each one. So we used a 32mm drill bit for drilling the holes for the galvanized poles. This allowed for a really nice tight fit, so I didn't want the poles to actually spin in your hands when using the bars. You also want to make sure you drill from the far side of these holes and this will allow you to cut out any sharp edges or sharp pieces of wood that will make it a lot harder for you to actually drive the poles through. Once you've driven out all the holes for your galvanized poles, you can then go ahead and start driving your poles through. You want to make sure to use WD-40 or grease within the hole and on the piping and this will make it a lot easier as you start driving them through. So to drive the galvanized pipe through the fence post, we just use the back of a hatchet and hit it slowly not to cause any cracks or splits in the wood and then one of us stood and applied pressure to the far fence post to, to stop it from moving around on the ground. So once we had the build pretty much finished I went ahead and I sanded down all the timber and then applied, just painted it with some green fence paint to help protect it against the rain. So after applying the second coat I just went around and I rubbed off any excess paint that got on the galvanized poles. So that's pretty much the build. After testing out the parallel bars, I've noticed a small bit of minor shake where the fence posts actually move in the ground a small bit. So I might just go ahead and drive in some support posts just to help take out that shake. So the great thing about calisthenics is that you can train anywhere. You don't need a lot of equipment and if you want to go that extra mile, you can go and you can actually spend a little bit of money and build some great equipment that will last you a long time. So that's what we went out and did and hopefully this video helped you guys out and anyone who's actually looking into building some equipment to further calisthenics training.